you know, God gives us uh, a lot of gifts, and I want to talk about that this morning. The, uh, do you really understand the things that God has done for us in His Son? Do we really comprehend? We forget as humans, we get busy with life and we forget. <coughs> Sometimes we're not in the Word. And uh, go to First John, if you will. What, what are some of the gifts that God has given you that you realize that when you were born again, you had a you had a new nature, right? Uh, you you looked at life uh, in a different lens. You didn't uh, peace in your heart. Yes, you have peace, don't you? You never had before. That's right. Now that peace is is God talks about it in Hebrews chapter four is a rest in God. Uh, if you're still struggling with your salvation, then you don't have rest, do you? Right. And and Jesus died that we could have we could rest in Him, not for us to try to do better, not for us to try to attain some level. Now, salvation is done, but our sanctification, which is God deals with us continually, and and God wants us. He wants to use us. He wants to, us to reach other people, right? That's right. And, that, and that's what God's called us to do, is to go in all the world and preach the gospel uh, to every creature, he said, so that people would know the truth. And when he does that and he empowers us to do that, uh, then that's sanctification. But the salvation is settled, right? Can anybody get saved? Yes. Yeah. Anybody to call on Jesus? actually call on Jesus can be born again. God made it that way. He didn't make it complicated, but he asked you to come follow him. You say, okay, Lord, wherever you lead. Now, I want, I want to make a statement. <clears throat> we can believe in God. A lot of people believe in God, right? Everybody you talk to here in America, they say, I believe in God, but do you believe God? Now, think about that. Do you believe God? Do you believe what he said in his word? When he tells you to do something, do you believe God? Or do you just believe in God? See, and there's a lot of difference in between believing in God and believing God. If God tells you something to do, you have to have faith <clears throat> that when you hear from God, that it is God speaking to you, right? right? I mean, a lot of times that's hard to discern. You say, well, Lord, I, 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 do I need to do this or do I not need to do this? And, and uh, uh, well, I mean, I feel like the situation, and we always take up for ourselves, don't we? I mean, pretty much. Huh? But it's God's gift to the believer. In 1 John chapter 5. Uh, and, okay, really what I want to talk about this morning is the God kind of life that he offers us, that he gives us as a child of God. It's called Zoe, Z-O-E. That's a God kind of life. It's eternal life. Right? Right. It's, it's, not, it's not for a little while and then God takes it away. God's life is eternal. His life is eternal. When Jesus came to this earth, he said, I came to give life. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the life. Yeah. What is, are we living that life? That's the thing we need to think about. Do we need to be renewed in our mind and think, you know what, I really need to live this life that God has given me. And I need to, now how do we, how do we approach God every day? We approach God every day and say, Lord, I want you to live out your life in me. Then you begin to see his life manifested in your body, actually in your body, and we'll get to that later. Verse 10, look at verse 10. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. Now what is the witness? First John 5 and 10. What is the witness? It's the Holy Spirit. Right. When you get born again, the Holy Spirit moves into your body, actually comes in. Now, I'm going to show you later on that Jesus comes in your life. That's what it says in Galatians 2 20. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar. That's going to be bad one day to stand before the Lord, you know, and he'll say, Hey, you made me a liar. What? 
Now, now, I said the witness is the Holy Spirit, and now we're going to read here, and it's going to say, too, this is the witness. You read it. This is the witness, the Word, the word of God. Yeah. You say, why is the Word so important? Because this is God's Word. It's not man's Word. This is God's Word. If man had written it, it wouldn't have been half that said in it or what was said, you know. Because he believed not the record that God gave of his son. Now, where does, where does God record what Jesus did? In the Bible, right? Now, how many times do we, do we not read the Bible? Do we not? Oh, we say, well, I'm listening to the Bible. But God wants that relationship, right? And what happens, what do you think the church is doing today that's not a, that we do not affect the world much? We're looking for something that makes us happy. Instead of living God's kind of life, we're living our kind of life and calling it God's life. We believe God. We believe God can do this. But do you really believe God? You said, well, I don't know. How do you believe God? Faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. When God speaks to you, a lot of times, it's totally against what, you, what you're thinking. And you think, well, I don't know if I want to do that or not, Lord. Well, wait a minute. And this is a record, verse 11, that God has given to us eternal life, and this life is in his what? Mm -hmm. It's in his son. <clears throat> this life is in his son. You have nothing. You have no gifts. You have no abilities. You have nothing in the kingdom of God outside of Jesus. That's the only way you have life. He that hath the Son hath life. Now this is this real life now. If we if we can get you see the uh, the young the young people today that's marching in the colleges and all these universities and all these people that are coming out, they have been taught that you can live your own life, you don't have to follow God, just do your own deal. But these old these old people they say they serve in God, you know, but it doesn't matter. That's crazy. Uh, we we will make it ourselves. You know, and they don't even know what they're doing. But we have to pray for them, don't we? And, and do what God's called us to do. Now, I don't know about you, but I get trouble a lot of times, in a sense, but in a way I got peace. God's going to take care of the son. I'm telling you, God, he is in control, and he's going to take care of it. The way he does is not up to me, it's up to what he wants. It's, right? hard, it's hard to see that, though. Yes, it is. All the turmoil and all the junk that's going on no, it's, it is it's hard to see the big picture and and the, and the people that there are so many people that are so wicked that you think well we're just losing the battle well, how do you think the apostle paul felt how do you think jesus felt i mean i mean he knew but he looked around and all these people hated him and they were crucifying him they have even attacked jesus christ they have even said we don't yeah. need jesus that's right. That's okay. Uh, I, got, I got a feeling. Let's see how you make it on that one. I got a feeling it's going to get worse. It, it's going to get worse. It is. And uh, but what is what is what is this about? God has placed in us this ability to be able to pray. I don't know about you. Isn't it good to be able to pray? Amen. If we couldn't talk to God, I mean, oh my goodness, I don't know. He that hath the Son that life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Uh, that you have to believe on the name of the Son of God. You say, well, well in verse, the verse 13 says, These things I have written to you, unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you, might, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Now, who is the Son of God? Jesus Christ. It's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. He, that's his name. Now, you see a lot of uh, Mexican people, they, uh, they, they name their kid, children Jesus, which yes. is Jesus, yeah. and uh, they, they did that. I mean, there are a lot of Catholics that, that went around the world, and they and so they named the children Jesus. But there's only one real Jesus Christ, that's right. right. And uh, and his that was God's gift to us, right? right. Look at while we in First John, go to First John chapter two and verse one. Uh, now these are things that God gives us that we can walk in them. God has promised us. <laughs> Since we're children of God, we're His children. We belong to Him. Now, I don't know about you, but did you realize 
Do you know anybody that's ever been adopted? Yeah. I do. I mean, I, uh, Hope was adopted. Terry Mears' mm -hmm. daughter was, was adopted. Did you know we're adopted? Yeah, right. God adopted us. Yes, sir. Did. He said, hey, I want you in my family. I said, you want me in your family? Yeah. Lord, please. Now, wait a minute. Yes, yes, I want you to come. Follow me. I said, okay, Lord. I, I mean, I, and there's a, there's a compelling call that God calls us to come follow him, to walk with him, to love him. Now, how many of you know, how many of you feel like you love God like you ought to? Uh, we don't do it. Uh, Why do we feel that way? Because he did so much for us. Yeah. And he does so much for us. He not only did, he keeps doing it. You know, even when we fail. Uh, I heard a song. Uh, Y'all may know it. I don't know. It says, does Jesus care? That, that's a good, that's a statement. Now here, where does this come in at? It comes in when you fail. And nobody cares. Let me just put it this way. If you, if you died today, would anybody care? Would anybody miss you? You know, you feel that way all the time. You think, well, why do I feel this way? Why, why am I going through this? Right? Does Jesus care? Does he really care? And when God, you say, well, I, I, it doesn't matter. I don't, I don't matter in this life. Yes, yes, you do. But see, when you get in that attitude, then that's not God's gift. See, that's the devil's gift. Right. And he's trying to get you to give up. Right. God never tells you to give up except on your way of doing things. He wants you to follow him. He, he wants to give you, now what kind of life he wants to give you? This Zoe life, this real life, it's real life. Now you can live on the other side, right? You don't have to follow Jesus. You, you don't have to study the Bible. You don't have to do all that stuff. You say, I ain't got time for all this. You know what I mean? I, you know. Okay, my little children. I love what he said in verse one. My little children. I like that. My little children. Aren't you glad that you're his little child? These things write out unto you that you sin not. Now that's kind of convicting because you say, okay, I do sin. Lord, I'm sorry, I do sin. Okay, now wait a minute. And if any man sin, or woman, I, I'm not adding to it, but I mean, he's talking about anybody. We have an advocate with the Father. Who is the advocate? Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ the righteous. Not, not, an advocate is a person like a lawyer. When the devil accuses us, Jesus stands up. Um, that, I, that's my child he's talking about right there. Uh, you say, yeah, you see what he's doing? You see how he's acting? You see this? You see that? Yes, but that's my child. I shed my blood for him, and he's my child, and he belongs to me. And his sins are forgiven. Now, I ask this question, and it... And, and, Galatians chapter 6 says we, we reap what we sow. Alright? Alright, now turn to Psalm 103. Just a minute. Psalm 103. I don't know about you, but it, it helps me to know and that God does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquity. Now this, uh, we're going to read this because we need to know this. Have you ever wondered about that? I mean, all the sins that you've done since you've been saved, now you say, well, the rest of them was forgiven, but what about these I've sinned since then? And you kind of worry about it, and you think, Lord, my goodness, this is just awful, and I'm not measuring up, and I don't understand. I, I mean, this is, and I did wrong, and, uh, uh, okay, verse, Psalms 103. He says, uh, bless the Lord, verse 1, O my soul, 
and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. These are benefits now, that God does. It's not, it's not something that we generate. It's just God's good. Who forgiveth most of thine iniquities. Now you want to say it, it? He says, all thine iniquities. Who healeth all thy diseases. You say, well, he ain't healed a lot of people. A lot of people dying. Well, he's healing them. That's right. That's right. He's taking them home. That's all he's doing. He said, okay, it's time to go. Uh, I talked to a, a man yet the other day, and uh, his son is a, is a pastor, actually, and he's, he's dying with cancer, and he's hurting so bad, and he said he just, he was, he just felt assured that the Lord was going to heal him and find a cure for his cancer. But said, I think he's realizing that God's going to take him home. And he's got a grandson that he's, he's working in the ministry too. And, uh, and then he has a, uh, he said, I've got a son-in-law, if you want to call him that. <laughs> Nothing to that effect. He said, he's got a brain tumor. And he, he, and he said, he's dying with cancer. He's going to die for my son. Man. Y'all got your plate full. His wife had just lost her mother. He had had to take care of his mother for the last two weeks while she was supposed uh, to go home. And I'm thinking, man, wow, y'all got your, this is just, you know. And this, the Lord knows when you go through struggles and, and when you're hurt, when you're wounded, and when you're, God's gift to you is his love, his grace, his mercy. And he said, who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Now, what you think about this? It's always a, a thought in my mind of me, it worries me, the fact that if God didn't give me his life, I would go back into the old life. And he asked me this, this man I'm talking to, he said, what about a person that doesn't serve God? And they just go back into the hog pen, you might say. I said, well, if they're a child of God, God will tear them up. Right? right? I mean, he tells us, he, he loves us, he chases us big times, and he tells us to, to follow him, and that's what God wants us to do. But he will draw you back, and he will work things out, and he will bring people in. God works it all for good, right? Am I right? right. right. To those that love him. Right. And God's working all the time to do that. Who, okay, he, now, this is, he redeemeth our life from destruction. The only reason you're alive today is because God has kept you safe this long. This long. Right. I promise you that's it. Right. You say, well, I, I, if I saw somebody coming, I'd, I'd swerve off the road. Yeah, you just think you would. My brother's going down the road, and a guy was drunk, and he ran into him, killed him, and killed both of them. He was running wide open, coming from Ogie Mall. He was drunk, and my brother just scooped him off the road, and all of a sudden, he's dead. Now that ain't, that, that, that wasn't no fun. That wasn't fun. Uh, my, you'd say, well, I, I have a lot of questions. I have a lot of questions, God, why? I don't understand it. I, this is crazy. This is, I, I just, it's just, Lord, I don't understand it. Well, okay. He, he has a purpose in whatever he allows. Many times we, we just do things that, that cause stuff, right? Can we do that? Mm -hmm. I mean, David caused a lot of trouble in his home. Yeah. David did that. That's right. And, and his sons followed what he did. You say, well, I hope my sons don't follow what I do. I hope my, I hope my daughters say they this and that. Well, we're humans, right? right? You can't blame somebody. You don't live a life blaming somebody because God has offered you his life. His Zoe life, his real life, his eternal life, his joy, his peace, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, and who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Tender mercies. It is God's grace that you're, that you're living today. I'm going to tell you something about it. I tell you what, the older you get in the Lord, you have to be careful about your attitude. You do. You have to watch it. God, God don't play games either. 
-hmm. They'll say, well, Lord, I just soon, uh, 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 don't go there. Just stop that. Who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. You say, I'm waiting on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. The Lord executed righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. Isn't that good? That's God promising now. I'm just telling you what God said. He made known his way unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is, I want you to watch this now, merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He, now listen to verse 10. He has not dealt with us after our sins. Praise God. Nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. As far as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. Verse 13, like a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. Thank God for that. Yeah. And, and you know what? We're saved from God's wrath. <laughs> Did you know if Jesus took the wrath of God in, on himself? He, yeah. he said he bore our sins in his own body on the tree. He bore all this for us. So that God's wrath would be turned away from us. God said, I, okay, I, somebody's going to pay for this. Somebody's going to pay for sin. But he looked to his son to do that. Now, he deals with us and he chases us, but we have, let me, let me, God's wrath is not on you. As a child of God, you don't have to worry about that. God, God, well, he was he actually Noah loaded up his family, and God says, "I'm going to destroy her." He said, "Now Noah, you build this ark." He did it. He got out of that place before, and this is why I believe in the rapture, pre-tribulation rapture, is because Noah got in, and the wrath of God came. And see, God's supposed to judge this nation. He is judging this nation right now. See, we want to blame. We want to blame, but you know where judgment begins? Yeah. At the house of God. Yep. You say, wait a minute now, wait a minute. We're we talking about us now. We're talking That's about right. the way God said, okay. Here's where the church is, is and this is the way the church was in, in Laodicea, the last church. And about, you know what, you know what their problem was? They were lukewarm. Oh, well, you know, Jesus, you know, it's all right. I got, I got my card punched, you know, I'm, I'm going to heaven, you know, I ain't got to worry about nothing. Just, I don't read my Bible, and I don't pray, and I don't seek God, and I don't, I mean, I'm going to worry about me, Lord, what about me? I said, the whole church today is worried about me. People, people want to go and they want to hear something, you're a ticket. It'll tickle my ears a little bit. I, I need it. I, you know, I, I need to know I'm okay, man. I know I'm not living right, but I need to know I'm okay. And the preacher said, okay, you're all right, man. He said, if you if you want to marry another man, just marry another man, man. <laughs> well, you know, it's all, no, y'all y'all just bigots. Y'all just mean. Y'all don't, what are you doing taking a stand against people that do this? Ain't nothing wrong with this. And the preacher plays his little part, leads them all straight. And God says, you know, that makes me sick right there. He said, I'll spew you out of my mouth. And the church said, we don't, we don't have any need. And if we're not careful, we're caught up in this. So I admit, listen, what's going to be the sign of the last time, you think? I think the number one thing is, because it's going to be pride, going to be selfishness. The church today is people are looking for something for me. Not others. Not what God wants. What about me? Sorry, God says, well, I'm going to tell you what you need to do. You need to lose your life. You need to die is what you need to do. Because he said, I'm fixing to go in the ground and die and I'm fixing to bring forth fruit. Until you die, Jesus said, you won't have any fruit. As long as you stay self-centered and you don't care about anybody else, and how, how many how many prayers and how many things 
or outside of even our own family? How many, how many, how many things do we reach out to and try to help people and try to encourage people in this walk and try to win people to Jesus? Because this thing's about over, folks. And I know it's about over for us old folks, to put it that way. Closer than ever it is. It sure is. It's getting closer all the time. And, and God said, listen, prepare to meet God. Prepare to meet him. That's okay, Lord. That's, but God's rest not only. Re we are redeemed by his blood. Therefore, we're not slaves to sin anymore. You believe that? A sin is not supposed to have dominion over, it, over us. That's what the Bible says. Go to Rome, please. <clears throat> How, how many, how many, when you get up in the morning, what's on your mind when you first get up? First thing on your mind. <laughs> it ought to be the word, right? It should be the Lord, yes. Yeah. Are, are you? <laughs> well, I got to go to work today, I'll tell you what. You know, uh, I, I, I know when I realize that, um, because not, I, not of you women, y'all y'all have a compassionate heart. Therefore, that leaves you the word vulnerable to being easily wounded, right? Easily hurt. Yeah. Right. It does it because you're sensitive. Because you're you may be oversensitive, but you're sensitive. You're you. Uh, a lot of times we try to tell April about her boy, but you know what? She knows her boy a lot better than we do. We think we know him, but she knows him. <clears throat> and she prays for him, and she talks to him. And see, because she does, her heart's broken. And until they are right with God, it just breaks a mama's heart. I mean, we, and then, uh, okay, let's just take a woman work. You know, what do they say about a woman's work? Never done. It's never done. never done. You come in, you do this, you do that, you do this, you get no appreciation. But the man does. Oh, he's nice, ain't he? But who's behind that man? If it wasn't for that woman, that man wouldn't be where he's. That's what the Bible says. And you say, well, you know. And so the woman has to take that and get in the background. A lot of times. I mean, that's not always, but I'm just saying, Jerry, that's what it is. And because we're oh, we're sensitive to the things the, of the family. We, yeah, women are sensitive to the things of the house and this and that. Well, ours is out of the shop. You know, I'm not doing this deal and doing that deal, but a woman is, uh, you know, we got we got to go out and take care and we got to go out and fish and hunt and bring in the game and this and that, you know. Fight the rat race. Yes, yes. And that's part of it. That, that's just, that's our calling. Each one has a calling. But where you get division is when we don't live that God life. We need to come together and say, okay, I'll tell you what. Look at, look at Romans 8. It's amazing to me that there's, a, there's so much in here. Romans 8 and 26. I want to show you what the, we have two, we have two making intercessions for us. Look at, yeah, verse 26, 8 and 26. <clears throat> you know, it won't be any good if you found out that at the bank somebody had deposited a million dollars and you said, boy, I'll tell you, I'm proud of that. I mean, I'm, I'm really proud. I appreciate that. Whoever did that, we just found a million dollars in there. But if you don't never write a check on it, it won't do you a bit of good. This is worth more than a million dollars, what I'm talking about this morning. Amen. But if you don't care, and you want to leave that book, and you don't care anything about what God's saying, you can go right on and bust your head against the wall all day long. But I'm going to tell you what, God's word is true, and it'll always be true. And you'll be the one to be the recipient and the hurt and the pain because you would not do, believe God you say, well, I believe in God. Yeah, but do you believe God? Do you believe what we're talking about this morning? Is this real? Is it my faith? Are we really grasping it? 
Are we full of ourselves to the point that not, I know I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to bend. I'm not going to, you know, I'll do what I want to do. We can be that way. How many of you know you can be that way? When you get wounded and you get hurt, you can, man, do it. We can act up. Woo! That look at verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Thank God he does. But we don't know what we should pray for as we ought. Did you know that? Now, you, we pray, but do you know, we don't know what we need to pray for, like we ought to. That's what he says. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. There are times when I feel like God lets me know that. You don't know how to pray about this. Be careful how you pray, right? Don't, this is what I, I'm real careful about saying. Lord, you, you save my children no matter what it takes. You do it your way. Yeah, it leaves it wide open. That's right, because I don't know. I mean, did you know we have, I'm just saying, uh, I'm just stating this. Did you know that when Jesus Christ died on the cross and was resurrected and went back to heaven, we actually have power over the devil? The disciples came back and said, man, alive with him demons are subject to us. Now, what did he say? What did Jesus say? Don't rejoice in that. Okay? What do you tell them to rejoice in? Your names are written in heaven. That's why you can do that. Your name is written in heaven. You have access to the throne of God. The angel didn't even contend with the devil when they disputed over the body of Moses, but he said, the Lord rebuked you. This is an angel, a mighty angel. He said, the Lord rebuked you. And so let's let the Lord do that. Let's let the Lord do it his way. And if we're in the way, just say, God, help me to get out of the way. Help me to be what I need to be. Help me to be sensitive to you because you love me more than I love myself. You agree with that? Yes. God loves you more than you love yourself. If, if you was left to yourself, you'd go out here and you wouldn't care. And folks, it's so easy to be full of self. I mean, well, that's yeah. where that's where pride comes in. That it? is, it? it's just a pride thing. We call it a noble thing, but it's a pride thing, you know. All right, now look in uh, verse uh, 30, 34. Same, same chapter. Romans 8. Who is he that condemneth? You ever feel condemned? Old devil, he'll, he'll, he'll 